according to this chart, what is the biggest driver of inflation during the pandemic? The blue is the, the dark blue is the recent period. It would be corporate profits. And what is that percentage? It is 54%, and that number does stay that level of high if you update that number to more recent numbers as well. So over half of the increased prices people are paying are coming from increases in corporate profits. Yes, the unit price index is reflected in corporate profits as opposed to other costs. So this is showing that markups have gone up beginning about 40 years ago. But what is this top gun kind of trajectory that's basically vertical he here? What is this? That is the level of markups in aggregate across the publicly traded companies uh, starting in 2020 and particularly in 2021, the highest increase, uh, highest one year increase on record. So this is after they pay their expenses, after they deal with supply chain, after they pay their labor, this is what the corporation is adding to the cost of the product in order to pad its bottom line. How does that compare to historically to other periods of inflation or over other periods of economic time? As reflected there and in other analysis, it is significantly higher in this recovery, 11.5%. And what is it today? 53%. Uh, so I want to make sure everyone in America understands this chart. What is a unit labor cost? The cost, wages and an associated right. work cost. So we could just wages. What is a non-labor input cost? Uh, a variety of things, including um, maintenance and, and investments. Okay, so I, I have to buy the, buy the stuff to make the widget. I have to have a factory. I have to keep the lights on. I have to hire someone to make the widget. That's this stuff. And this is what I add on, on top. My question for you is um, whether you would be willing to share today um, your social security, your birth date, and your address at this public hearing? Uh, I would be a bit uncomfortable doing that, Congresswoman. Um, if, if, if you'd so oblige me, I'd prefer not to. Okay, could I ask you why you're unwilling? Well, that's sensitive information. I think it's sensitive information that uh, I, I like to protect, um, and I think consumers sh uh, should protect theirs. Okay, so my question then is, if you agree that exposing um, this kind of information, information like that that you have in your credit reports, creates harm, therefore you're unwilling to share it. Why are your lawyers arguing in federal court that there was no injury and no harm created by your data breach? Congresswoman, I, it's really hard for me to comment on uh, what our well, lawyers sir, are doing. Respectfully, excuse me, but you do employ those lawyers. And you, you, they do operate at your direction. They're your counsel. And they are making these arguments in court, arguing on the record. I have the pleadings here from the court case. They are arguing on the record that there was no, that this case should be dismissed because there is no injury and no harm created by the disclosure of people's personal credit information. Yet I understand you, as I would, to believe that that information, that the exposure of that information, if I asked you if you would give it to the committee and you understandably said no, would in fact create a harm. So I guess I would ask you to please look carefully at what your lawyers are doing um, and the arguments that they are making because I feel they're inconsistent with some of the helpful testimony that you've provided today.